Simons, please. Here. 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 Okay, all the board members received the minutes from the March 2nd meeting. Um, nobody has any uh, questions or comments. Uh, a motion to accept the minutes. Move. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, motion carries. All right, our first item on the agenda this evening is Lepton and Clark uh, LLC subdivision. It's located at 22 Billboard and Way. Hello. Hi, good evening. Uh, good evening. I don't know what am I supposed to do. <laughs> so, I was told to Nobody show. else does either, so as long as we're all in the same boat. Uh, it, uh, it, Nick Delusia was supposed to come here tonight, but due to the virus thing, he's having to take care of some merger business. So uh, I was here last time, I think, uh, three years ago. Uh, okay. We went through you know, a whole bunch of uh, checking the requirements and all that. Uh, we want to extinguish uh, an easement that goes from Bill Horton Way through my property onto the Lucia's property all the way to the other side. And everybody has agreed that Nick is okay, I'm okay. Apparently the road you know, authorities, wherever they are, they issue letters, everybody's okay. I believe now it's just up to you guys to be okay with it. Okay. Uh, we've submitted the plans, the amended plans that show the Eastman Stingers. Uh, we've got, you know, we, I think we've done. Okay, okay. you did the uh, sort of the amended plan that was submitted shows the removal of those yes. Eastmans? It, well, it shows the Eastman and it says to be removed. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. So it just shows uh, to be that, removed. That, that's, I asked Larry, I said, Larry, you didn't remove the Eastman. He goes, no, it, it says it's to be removed, but I have to put it in there. All right, so I mean, it sounds like, well, we'll defer to the attorney, but I believe we would just have to vote on approving the removal of the easements and subject right. to the. Nothing on your end. Okay. No, we don't have anything on our end. Yeah, no. just subject right. to the applicant submitting a revised um, map. Right, so what needs to happen is the board tonight is going to um, do a motion to allow you to submit the revised map that will show the sign taken off the map and will also show the easement taking off the map. But you and Mr. DeLucia need to do the agreement between yourselves to extinguish the easement and file it with Dutchess County so that the extinct it goes away. This board has the permission, can give you the permission to change the map, but the easement itself is something that you and he have to do. So um, you can- So you have to submit a joint document to the county? What you need to do is do, there's a number of ways to do it, and I don't know if either one of you have an attorney, but you can do it by just agreement that says we're going to extinguish well, the just, easement. Just between the two of us. Right, but then that document needs to be filed in the chain of title with the Dutchess County Clerk's Office. Okay. And once that happens, you provide us with the proof, <coughs> and then the chair can sign the plan showing that the easement is no longer on it. So we need that, but tonight the board can authorize that all that to take place so that you don't have to come back before this board, okay? I mean, not that I ever want to see you guys again. But <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, so oh. that, uh, that document between Nick Lucia and myself, uh, that we'll consult with the public attorneys and right. we'll see what that is. And we submit that to the- Dutchess, Dutchess County, County Clerk's County. Office for right. filing. Okay. And then you to give the town proof of filing of that document. And you. right, and that because that's a condition we would go to be yeah. or to one of us in the office, and that would be a because the motion that the board will do tonight will have as a condition that you file that document and provide proof of filing. Okay, okay, so once I provide the proof of filing, what about the map? You then well, we need a new map so that shows not the easement and not the sign. So right now we have a map that says this is the easement to be removed. Right. So now no we, easement now. Right. Then we'll need a map that has no easement and, and there's and also you a sign. The sign, who signed the one by the road there? Correct. My because the sign was never installed. Right. So we now have permission for the sign not to be installed. And so you don't <laughs> want it on the map. Is there a sign on the map 
strong as that. It I is. Think it is. There's, there's a also, a and also, okay, two things have to go. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And those marks come back to you. To thee, well, yes. To you. After, after, yep, hold on. after the easement document is filed in the clerk's right. office and then proof is, okay. is provided to the town. Okay. I think I got it. Okay, hold on. Right, so. Yeah. David had, um, David had one uh, minor item in his um, letter. He says that uh, the drawing shows the ownership of lot one as and Lynn uh, Associates, but Dutchess County Parcel Access shows the owner as Deltra Holdings, LLC. Yeah. I, I don't know. Really. They're, both, they're both yes. Nick DeLucia companies. They're right. both Nick DeLucia companies? Yes, he owns both of them. Does that really matter? Does it? Does it matter? Well, I'm sure that Larry, we should get it when right, he does though, right? the revised map, he will. Whoever the then okay. current owner is should be on the map. So just, so just we'll make sure. Right owner is on the map for lot number one, right? Okay. Just make sure that's a, that the that's 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 the correct that's LLC is on there. Okay. 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 All right. So as long as they have the proper ownership on the on the okay. map. So my recommendation would be for the board. Uh, to make a motion to allow the chair to sign an amended subdivision map with three changes being um, the removal of a sign at the driveway entrance, the removal of the 30 foot wide access easement that's shown, and the showing the verifying the correct owner of lot number one. And it will be on the condition that evidence of filing of proof of the extinguishment of the easement be supplied to the town and let's do evidence supplying proof of the ownership of lot number one supplied to the town. Okay. You can simply say so. so, so, so one should already be with the Dutchess County Clerk's Office. The only thing that you will need to do is the proof of extinguishment of the easement, okay. but give us whatever copy the current deed is that shows who the current oh, owner is. This is a proof that they right. Okay. Proof of the that whatever ownership is on the land is the actual ownership. Exactly. Right. Okay. Correct. Okay, so we need someone to make a... I'll make that motion. Second. Okay, motion's made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, motion carries. Okay. So get your, you know, get everything in order, um, get it back to the town, and then we should be able to to sign off on that. Okay, good. Is there a time frame for this? Should I do it like, you know, tomorrow or something? No? That's okay. up to you. Okay. okay, so there's no deadline. When, when you have everything done and you have it all completed, then we'll present it to the okay. chair yep. for yep. We'll do it as soon as possible. Appreciate okay. It. Thank you very much. Stay, have a good uh, night. Stay safe. You're welcome. Okay. Right. You too. Right. Take care. All right. Okay. Our next item on the agenda this evening is a site plan and special use permit for Downey Energy Liquid Propane Storage. Capelli Architect. Um, we were here before this board maybe six months ago uh, uh, presenting a schematic site plan. So now we're, we've introduced our site plan with a formal application, revised EAF. As many uh, of you may uh, remember, um, there needed to be a change in zoning to allow this particular use in this commercial zone. So what we're proposing to do is, is, is construct um, a small little building, 1,800 square feet, and two above ground liquid uh, propane storage uh, uh, tanks, again, above ground, on the site, which is on Old Route 9, just south of NNS. Um, and pretty much that's it. We wanted to start the process, if you will, uh, because this is tied into, uh, the seeker process is tied into the town board finalizing their um, their approval process. Correct. Um, yeah. We met with our consultants, with some of the fire officials in town. That discussion will continue. Um, we hope to invite our consultants uh, to one of the board meetings at your discretion, which board meeting, to perhaps give a presentation um, uh, to the planning board here, as she did at the town board meeting, to answer a, a myriad of questions 
about a use that you know not too many people are familiar with. So uh, again, just to get the ball started, we have a, a review letter from David, we have a <coughs> review letter from Peter. I don't know if there was any showstoppers, but I'm here before we really uh, get into the site plan to see if you had any questions, any thoughts, any ideas, any changes, any questions you may have in this early, uh, in this early phase of the planning. I do know that, I believe that the uh, engineer and the attorney, I think, both want to discuss some of the issues with the EAF itself, mm -hmm. um, the way some of the questions were answered. Um, maybe we could go through those real quick. Um, to get the, so right. they get you on, get to get those resolved. Um, well, uh, the first thing is, uh, one of the things that we picked up was that you're going to need uh, a DEC permit because you're going to be within the buffer. Correct. So that's going to have to be updated on the EAF at the DEC with another involved agency. That's fine. My, my, my bad. That's and fine. And then um, um, looking through David's letter, he didn't really have a lot of comments on the uh, EAF. Um, I've Lisa, had a few. If you but Lisa to the has picked up some, yeah. Okay. Um, on item D1F, um, Residential property it just wasn't answered, so it, it's whether you have residential on the property. I'm guessing the answer is no, but we need to uh, have that box checked. That's on page four. Right underneath that, you have that the dimension is 2,030 feet tall. I think that might be a typographical error. 2,030, absolutely. I think that um, that's just me, but I thought that sounded a little high. Um, you need a variance for that. You know. <laughs> And then under D2 on the same page 4 of 13, um, the question is, will there be on-site dewatering or processing? You have that checked, yes, but then you don't have the filled in the further information beyond that, mm -hmm. which information needs to be supplied. Um, on page 5, you've checked no, but then you've answered the subsequent questions on the bottom of the page, which don't need to be answered if you check no. So those should be eliminated. On page seven, um, the demand for energy uh, is not answered. So we need to have that filled in. Mm -hmm. And then on page eight, the disposal of solid waste. Uh, I'm guessing I, that I might just have had a question as to, um, I guess it says less than a ton per month once the operation's open, maybe you can talk to us a little bit about that. I don't yeah. Know. yeah, there's no there's no one occupying the building, so there's no waste being generated. But I didn't want to say zero and have somebody say, you know, the, okay. the so occasional. I so I put that less than one time. Wanted to clarify mm -hmm. that because uh, that. And on page 10, you haven't responded to the contamination history on the property, so we need that completed. And I these. think that was said, it. Huh? <laughs> Sorry? I said you do read these. <laughs> <laughs> I do. Occasionally. I'll double uh, And I'll also, um, review, just review in that. general, my packet didn't have an owner consent. I don't know if we have one on file, but um, if you can provide one, if you sure. haven't provided one. <coughs> and then I have one final point, and then I'll be done, and then yeah, we'll go back to Pete. Yeah. Um, you have three different hours and one, it sort of ties into the EAF. You have three different hours of operation. Mm -hmm. In your memo, it lists um, an occasional Saturday. In Ms. Amendon's narrative, it's um, a rare Saturday. And then on the EAF, it's Saturdays and Sundays. So if you can just clarify when you come back to us with what the potential hours are, what yeah. days. <coughs> and that's going to be a seasonal occurrence there. So there's not going to be any probably weekend activity there in, in the non-heating season. It's gonna be kind of difficult, but I'll try to clarify it all and try to tie it down. It's, I'm gonna guess in the winter time, I don't wanna necessarily say there's not gonna be any activity Saturdays and Sundays, and obviously in the, in the uh, winter time, there's gonna perhaps be heavier activity. That's fine, we just so, want some consistency in the file. That's fine. And I, that was all I had. Okay, I'm looking through uh, David's uh, comments. Um, Seem to be anything too too drastic in there. Al, one of the things was um, uh, on um, site plan site plan comments that the proposed uh, local um, local law has some different um, setbacks, and it looks 
like uh, uh, you'll have to increase the, uh, I guess, the separation between the tanks. That's fine. I mean, David and I wrote actually wrote together the the um, I don't want to say the new law, but NFPA uh, 58 does not require 10 feet. But I have no problem. We have it 8 feet okay. on the site plan. We'll make it 10 feet. Yeah. So whatever that's, the, whatever that's that default problem. regulations are, they should reflect that. The proposed default right. regulations. That's just letter. Is it? Yeah, and I kind of see he wants me to change the, in, in, in the table um, for in both, both regulations. regulations. The new zoning ordinance is suggesting, as we read, five acre minimum, but it currently isn't a five acre minimum. So we put what the current minimum is, but there is no new law yet. But I'll change it to five. And well, maybe just put a uh, footnote or something. That's fine. Or something, you That's know, fine. referencing based on a proposed law. Um, so in terms of um, some of the other highlights of our comments, uh, something that had you met with the highway superintendent about the access point? Have, have not done that, but to, to facilitate the truck traffic, it's, it's no, I understand. I impossible to get one access. I just want to make sure. I didn't see anything in the, in, you know, the town code that prohibits the two driveways. Right. So as long as, you know, Mike is okay, that's fine. So just, you know, we'll need something from him on that. I will reach out. We'll need to have a drainage analysis, to, you know, like something. We just need to make sure that uh, there's not going to impact on that 15-inch pipe that crosses the road. Um, and then just like basic stuff at some point, you have to show the well and sewage, sewage disposal system, you know, the leaders for the building if you're going to have them, you know, details, you know, for fencing, asphalt. And right, all typical details that we And I thought that the grading in the rear, I thought that you could really go cut that back a lot. I mean, you know, not a lot, actually. In the back of the site, the rear of the site, I mean, you're, you're showing, you know, the grading going way back. If you, if you go, I mean, assuming that, you know, your scale's right, if you go to a one-on-three on, one on slope, you shouldn't have to grade anywhere near that. That's I'll an take engineering a look at that. thing. I'll take a look at that. And so. did you want to address Central Hudson? Uh, that's on the next application. Oh, yeah. sorry. <coughs> so we're all, we're all kind of we're all a little off. We're all kind of <laughs> a little off. Today. Um, uh, and that was it for it. What, what, is, what is the building going to be used for? Building's going to be used for an occasional truck storage. There will be an office in there, although nobody's going to inhabit the office. So it's just going to be a small little residential style building, I'll call it. Single story uh, type of building. A couple of garage doors, just to, you know, just to have For materials on, on site. Yeah, have a building on site. So we'll need elevations at some point. Oh, 100%, yeah. yes. Yeah. This is an early yeah. uh, submission. We know what well, we gotta give you, it's, et cetera, et cetera. Yes, it's just, yeah, right. early on. So one of the things that we talked about before is um, uh, cleaning up uh, you know the EAF, and then um, you know the board. Uh, the board may take action tonight on uh, authorizing circulating for um, lead agency, yeah. and uh, subject to um, you know the office and staff by reviewing the changes to mm -hmm. the, you know the EAF. So that was that was pretty much it for now. Yeah, no, exactly. We'll just go ahead and you know based upon. You're submitting, resubmitting, we could vote tonight <coughs> to circulate for lead agency to get the secret process started. Sure. <clears throat> but then it would just be a matter of you We're revising the EAF, EAF, having staff look at it prior to submitting the circulation to all the involved agencies. Sure. So um, that's one thing we could vote upon right now. Um, so to get a motion to circulate. I'll make that motion. All right, circulate for lead agency with the. Uh, based upon the revised EAF to be submitted. Uh, do we have a second? Second. All right, second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, so that motion carries. Okay. So the ball's in your court. Um, what we talked about was to um, move through, uh, you know, the secret process so that because Correct. the planning so board would need to act on um, so we could do the, the environment. We could do the environmental review, the, the secret review for the project, and then after we've Accumulated everything we need, we can then make.
make the decision whether or not this is you know, a negative declaration right. or a positive declaration has to be granted. So um, at least it gets that portion going. Right. And then they can go back to uh, the Back to the, to the town board, correct, right. to move the project. Because they, the, they need our determination in order for them to act on the change in the local law. Because I believe the secret process was correct. deferred to us. And they would need to act on that before we can complete the site plan process. Correct. Yes. Going back and forth, that's why we submitted something adequate enough maybe to get reviewed, but not yeah. obviously all the details yeah. that we know have to be part of the full application. I would like to see as far as, as, far as um, secret process, uh, you know, the drainage uh, analysis, we should have something like basic so we can at least say, yeah, you know, it looks like it's not going to be an issue. That, okay. is, that is part of secret, so. That's fine. And I don't know about the DEC, I mean, I do makes a complete application to them. I don't. They'll consent to lead agency, but they probably won't say much more than that at yeah, this juncture. That's true. That's true. We'll get some comments from them when we do circulate as a lead agency, but I mean, I can't really see them. I mean, you know, the road actually separates, you know, the wetlands, so the buffer is just a little piece of the buffer is on the other on side of the property. road. Right. That's correct. They were out there, right? You know, you, you know that, right? So they were out there, they signed off on a map and everything. It was part the of the validation map. map. Yes, a validation right. map. Because right. you know, we know across the streets, yeah. it's underwater. Okay. And exactly right, the road right. kind of acts as a, right. yeah. as a buffer. It's all, it's yes. all right. buffer. So that Correct. should take care of bats and turtles. We'll, at least, we'll put the bat notation on, and then the plans when it gets there, and the turtles are yeah. across the street. So we may be, we'll, We'll be able to at least determine whether we need more information to sure. make a secret determination once we hear back from them. Not a problem. But Mike, do I, have, I think you submitted a habitat assessment? Yes. Yeah. That's yeah, part that's of the back. Back. You submitted. So do you think you'd be able to get the revised EAF back to us in time to come back for the May 4th meeting, or would you prefer May 4th? May 4th. <coughs> well, we got to start May. It's going to take. Well, I'll, I'll, if, I'll probably. Tie this up in the next day or two, so by the, before the end of this week. So from a timing point of view, I'm subject to your schedule, but you know I don't want to go too far beyond this. So well, we have to circulate, so it's going to take. Correct. I mean, you know, At least all 30 the days. days. Have at least we're all 30 yeah. days. Okay. Yeah, we're almost it into is. we're almost into you know into April now. Sure. Um, plus, with everything that's currently going on, you know, everybody knows where things <coughs> are going. So sure. um, May 4th would be the earliest. Uh, to put you back on the agenda again. That's fine. Can I get the revisions directly to the uh, yeah, to the consultants to, if, yeah. if you don't mind? Uh, well, we yeah, well, we basically yes. right get get the revisions in to them so that they can review it. Um, it we've given them the authority that if um, their everything that comes back is acceptable, that then B will circulate Correct. for lead agency. So. Okay. Yeah, so it's not going to hold you up in, in that case. Good. It's just a matter of how quick you get that paperwork back to us. Thank you very much. But please send the hard copies. Yeah, go to through you know, the planning office you know, first and copy us. We want to make sure the planning office is copying. I usually do. I've been, okay. I, you know, as I've been doing in the past, I send stuff to you guys and I send stuff to B at the same time. I, I don't want to wait necessarily for it to be processed and then submitted to you guys. I'm trying to pick up a, a couple of days here and there. You know, on all the projects that we worked mm -hmm. on recently, so yeah, that's fine. Okay. Okay. We'll and everything into you. Yeah, and if you can also submit electronic copy. Absolutely. Um, yes. So she has, and then that way, when it does come in, she can automatically send that to everybody and follow up with the right. the hard copies after the. Yeah, we've been doing that. Yes. Okay. Not a problem. Okay. All right. Very good. Thank you very much. Okay. You're welcome. Next item on the agenda this evening is Gordon Ground Mount Solar Panel. What do you have? That's, it's just is a it of the property, so you can see kind of where the rates go, what the landscape looks like. Of the okay, this is in addition to what was already yeah, submitted. Yeah, I just wanted to present some yeah. photos. Yeah, the 
the secretary. Thank you. All right. Okay. All right. So, what is it? Can you give us a little summary of what you're proposing to do. Did you receive a copy of the letter, the comments from the town planner? I from think I got uh, them on Friday. Frederick yeah, Park? I have, I have, okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. So um, if I, I could address some of those comments. So, I mean, yeah, because I think what's going to happen here is we have, um, based upon the information that I had access to over the weekend uh, and the comments that David has made, is the house. The actual footprint of the main house is 1,406 square feet. Um, you know, the actual footprint, we're not talking about, you know, the total square footage of the house. Yeah. So the footprint. That's kind of my question. That's why I wanted to come today. Right. So, the, so basically, the, the, the way the law is written, it's based upon the primary structure mm -hmm. on the property, and that you can only have 50% of that square footage in solar panels. And only for the main house, not? Yeah, I think, let me just, uh, there's actually, it states it, let's see here. Um, in accordance with section 240-57A1A of the zoning law, the surface area of the solar collectors cannot exceed 50% of the square footage of the footprint of the existing home. And so the number, I think I, well, I did speak to my engineer about this today, I don't have the exact number. He did not Which what, where I got the square footage so, yeah, from? The footprint of the, the, footprint of the, the house, house was yeah. from, the, uh, from the assessor's records through parcel access. And I knew he, what he had got, I thought, was close to 2,000. Still under, still not, you know, you raised still over the 50%. Right. Um, so so the, the issue that comes in, and we've had this come before us before, yeah. is um, if they, pref if they, want to go forward with the project, they would have to go in front of the ZBA, the Zoning Board of Appeals. Um, they can get a variance for this. Um, actually, there was another project not too long ago. It was a similar situation. Um, you know, they exceeded that 50%. Uh, they went to the Zoning Board, got a variance, came back to us. Um, at that point, it was pretty much a, a simple, you know, approval after that because there really wasn't a lot that we had to see. Um, you know, as long as the other items are met um, regarding, you know, just the, the other note that David has on there, you know, that a 10-foot clear area. Yeah, that um, would be good, yeah. And also that the, the array um, is also screened from any neighbors. But it looks like that they're set back far enough from any of the neighbors. Yeah. That won't be an issue. Um, do you guys normally do a site visit or uh, the photos, I believe, right now are sufficient. I don't think there's a need for us to do a site visit. Can't really tell where the array is going from the photos. I know, I, I kind yeah. of that quickly, you can draw. And even there is, is that, there's an easement there for the power lines that run through that property? There's a and you're like, you can't be in that easement, I would assume. 
there's a sense of us in easement, so what you'll need is um, from Central Hudson a consent for you to put anything within the easement area. Um, was this what you found in the easement? Was it already in the easement? No, you know, the lines show that are going to the easement array have to array have to they cross the cross easement. the easement, the central central Hudson easement. So we need something from um, Central Hudson. I mean, you can probably ask them as part of your application, yeah. but you definitely need to have that specific it's, thing included. Yeah, with the Central Hudson, it's just like a portal, it's very uh, uh, blanket application for everybody, so this would be a special, that's why I'm kind of asking. Yeah, we would yeah. need that for planning board purposes. Okay. Okay, um, the other thing I saw was about, well, there was a historic preservation, so I've already requested a letter from Chappelle. That I mean, is that going to be required? The shipo, they have to get a letter from them. Do you think, or is it something we should have them contact David? Well, if just you've already over? reached out for them and you've already started the process, then that's fine. They'll probably come back with either it's not within their jurisdiction not or that you're not disturbing the ground, so it yeah. won't be an issue. So if the process has already started, there's no reason to stop it. Um, okay, if you just have them. That, we might not make it. Yeah, after okay. right after you've completed the yeah. We got a quick back look, you know, but it took me about 30 days last time, so I haven't gotten it. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, so I think that's pretty much all of it. I mean it looks like it's um, I don't think there's an issue with screening, so I don't know if any of the other members have any yeah. questions at all regarding this one. Yeah, I'll um, try to superimpose the panel on the <coughs> statement next time we come back. Okay, that would okay. be helpful. Okay. And yep, you'll just want a visual. A survey or whatever um, evidence to show the house square footage, the footprint of the main house when you for your ZBA application. So yeah, so if I find that it's more than what the assessor has, we just say something else. Would you rather, you know? Start the conversation with the assessor. Okay, yeah. got it. <laughs> okay. Aaron, did you get a copy of our engineering letter? I sent it to the engineer. I didn't know that it should, it should go to you. I mean, Can I see it? here, here, here. Great. It's minor stuff. Oh, that would be great if I can have it. Yeah, no. Thank you. That's fine. Thanks. All right. Okay. So I guess after, um, yeah, once you're completed with the zoning board, um, the secretary will put you back on the agenda for the planning board, um, and we'll go from there at that point. Okay. Okay. Um, do we have the date by chance? I know you have to come in for us. Um, you still have to. You have to go through the go through the zoning board um, process, but. The date. Um, so we have a meeting coming up on July 20th. We're going to go back to the April 14th. Okay. And what's the submission deadline for that? Steve? A week. A week. The, a week. The Monday before.
next item on the agenda this evening is a conceptual review for Hudson Valley Lighting for an amended site plan. so they could pick no, it up for from, the, camera. Uh, for the, the camera. camera above. I keep forgetting. Yeah. That way they can. All right, thank you. So what we're proposing is a 142,000 square foot expansion on the rear of that existing facility. Mark, one more thing. You either need that oh. microphone or this one. Or the loose Touching one. That. Um, Nobody else has touched it tonight. 142,000 square foot addition on the rear of the existing structure. Um, right now, the, it serves as a warehouse for lighting fixtures. Um, they're doing quite a bit of work uh, on the structure. I think they've been in front of the board. They're uh, looking at doing a revitalization of the front facade. They're going to be converting a section of that into uh, a, a glass structure and taking down some of that concrete tilt-up structure. Um, I think you guys have looked at that a while ago. Yes, yes, we did. So there, that works underway. Uh, this project would involve basically moving some of the distribution uh, from the rear of the site, uh, the building, and then relocating it in a new, new addition. So what we are here tonight to discuss is um, we are proposing a um, temporary access off of Maloney Road, which would serve for construction only. That would keep everybody uh, basically out of the front of the building, which is mainly where they have uh, most of their parking. So we just think it might be cleaner. We do have access on Maloney Road. Um, we're also proposing some land bank parking there. One of the other items we would need from the board is a waiver. We are proposing 200 parking spaces that we can actually get on the site now. We'd like to land bank 187 additional parking spaces as because of the use as a warehouse, I know the zoning code or the code requires a certain amount of parking for it. They would just, they're never gonna ever need it. They don't have that many people working in this facility that's gonna generate that, that type of parking. Uh, so what we're proposing tonight, if the board is so willing, is we're, we are proposing temporary parking, <coughs> or sorry, land bank parking in these areas identified as yellow in, in this uh, drawing. Um, <coughs> again, we would need, uh, we, we are proposing 200. Uh, in the, the client anticipates that full build out, they would have about 166 employees. Um, so, right, we are proposing 200. There's not a lot of, uh, this is not a, a retail space. You don't shop here, you don't come here. Their customer base is not really coming to the site. They do have meetings with uh, people that make orders, but it's you know one to two vehicles. Uh, they, they have a facility in California, which they do a lot of the, the work out there as well. They also have a facility in New Windsor uh, where they you know do, do similar stuff. It's, as far as the customer relations, it'll be probably in that side. So that's uh, that's part of what we're here for tonight. This project, as you can see, does encroach into the wetland buffer. Um, we have, uh, really because of the way the wetland lays out on this property, we really don't have an option to be able to make the, the improvements that they, they feel necessary without encroaching into that buffer. Uh, we have notified the DEC um, to discuss this, uh, and we're really going to let the board circulate as lead agent and just deal with it through Seeker. Okay. Um, all right. Just trying to think. Um, with the in regard to the parking, would you be able to get something for us 
in writing from the applicant themselves, sure. just stating the nature of the business and, and sure. the need and the need that you know they're requesting the land banking. Okay. Yes, um, we can do that. Yeah, it should I believe it should come from them. Uh, I don't personally. I don't have an issue with land banking. I don't know if the rest of the board does. So for ships work, Mark. They work uh, ships. They may, but I don't think they're doing it now. But I will find out. Okay, because that okay. would have an effect too on you know. Right. If there's not yeah. all the hundred people there, hundred on the way in. And right. I mean, yeah. So we get some information on that. I can do it. Yeah, if you're worrying about overlap. Yeah, between right. chefs, right? Yeah, and then they can also address that. Uh, you know, we could do that, right? In their um, in their narrative too. Um, yeah. Other than that, I mean, I don't know. Does any of the other board members have any questions? Are you planning on leaving the construction road no, there after? No. Okay. Taking no. Back out? no. The only thing we would probably do, I know, um, we are showing these land bank. So what we would probably do is, I guess, just cut it off at the back or the land bank. Yeah. And then, then it would be, I mean, we could actually uh, reclaim it for grass. I mean, if there's no need for it, if we, if the board sees fit, we can land bank it, we'll probably just let it revert back to grass. I mean, most of that area there in the back, even where you're showing, uh, you know, the land bank parking, probably um, most of that area is going to be used for construction staging materials and, you know, trailers and Correct. all that. So you're going to use, you're going to use up most of that area, you know, in the construction phase. So, but we'll reclaim it, you know, once we're done. They have no need for it if, if we don't use it to park it. You know, the drainage, you know, I know that uh, it looks like the um, addition is going in an area that's already, you know, paved. So that's one, you know, positive thing. Yeah, we're trying to do that as much. There is some, there is some overflow to the back. You can see where, you know, we are encroaching into the, that drainage yeah. area in the back, so. So, you know, you obviously have to do, you know, a swip and you know, all that kind of stuff. That'll be a little, little, uh, you know, challenging. And, you know, the septic system, you know, I'm, sh you know, I'm sure you're. Actually, um, the um, Felonser is handling that. They're, they have been in discussion with the uh, Department of Health knowing that uh, this this was originally designed for Pepsi, I believe Pepsi. Yes, yeah, it was, uh, or Coca-Cola, Coca I think. They used to have bottles companies. back there, okay. yep. They had a large water usage. Uh, so, so maybe 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 it's already sized. We, I'll, I'll we've gotten, a, you know, whatever you get from the Board of Health, it basically says we think that, you know, we actually meet it with the current requirements. Oh, excellent, good, so, that's great. Yeah. Because remember, it was designed for much larger numbers not just for what they were doing, but also for what they're allowing. Yeah. So we think we're going to be okay with that. So we may not be expanding that at all. Good. Yeah. Excellent. And the water yard, I mean, they're already, uh, already, you know, they're hooked up to the county. Yeah. Good. Right. The, um, the new addition, that's going to be similar construction to what's there? We think it's pre-engineered. Don't think we're going to be tilt up. Okay. Yeah, it's not as fun as everybody thinks. It's just a little bit more cumbersome if you make a change, like the change with what was mentioned earlier. I mean, it's it's you got to cut those panels, and it's not. It takes a little bit of finesse. So we're yeah. probably going to go something. Probably, I would say pre-engineered. Okay. We'll find out when we, I guess, once we get the application and then we circulate, um, and then we'll get DDC's comments back, I guess, regarding that, um, you know, regarding the infringement into the buffer. How do we move forward with uh, land bank parking? Is that something we come back to the board and, and that's a waiver by this board? I believe, I believe so. Okay. Yeah, we do it, we do it all here. Okay. As long it as would it's be a, shown. Con a condition of your site plan approval. Sorry. A condition of site plan approval okay. could be Correct. the land bank parking. Okay. Any setback issues? Or no. No. Yard? No. Not not side yard. Um, or sorry, not anything rear yard, side yard. The only setback issue is obviously the 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 um, level buffer. Yeah. Okay. So 
So when do you think you'll have an application? Waiting for DEC first and then? Or no, we're going to probably, um, probably submit to the town, circulate, right? And then we'll go to DEC as part of it. So, I mean, we would, we're going to move forward with what we are going to assume is the land bank, because otherwise, if not, then it changes our SWIP for coverage and stuff. So I, that's why I'm asking tonight if we go, you know, any further than this, we're gonna yeah. need some. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, it sounds like the rest of the boards and the grants okay. that we have no problem with land backing it. So um, if you well, want to put that. Um, well, um, would it be land, land bank parking or just? If the code requires in excess of the 200 spaces that they're proposing. Oh, if the code requires. Okay. Right, because but of the square footage of the building, there's a parking requirement, so. Have you done the calculation yeah. for the parking yeah, and it's, it's uh, 387? 387. Right. So the 187 would need to be land bank. Okay. But the only thing about the land banking is, uh, well, I guess if you ever had to go put it in, I mean, typically we would want to look at what would be, you know, the drainage impacts and that's what you're trying to, you know, avoid. Because well, I mean, we can, we can. That's why I asked if it was actually land land bank or if or if the planning board had the uh, ability to um, waive a certain number you know, of spaces it's again I don't know the code that well because David usually does parking and stuff so I don't look at parking well the you know question would be if this building ever changed uses though I think for a future user if they were going to use all the spaces you may want to have the ability the town might want the ability to have the parking uh, as opposed but to we could have a note on the map and in the resolution that should they want to now resurrect, bring in that parking that they would have to come back here so we could look at stormwater and other issues. That's just something, something we'd have to look at. Again, I don't really know the code that well for parking in this Davis area. But. All right, well, we can look at it with David. Okay, it's our intent to go ahead and submit, you know, get, get the plans, get fully a uh, full uh, submission to the board. I think they can wait up to 50 percent and then close it. So we'll wait. Yeah, as a general matter, it sounds like the board doesn't have an issue with the concept of less parking, so we'll figure out the, whether it becomes an actual waiver or a land bank parking thing okay. before you come back. But as a general matter, um, I think they're good going forward with that. Okay. And with the construction road, right? Yeah, no, I think everybody's on board with it. Just, you know, you obviously got to work out this little bug now, um, okay. you know, to where you need to go forward with it. Okay. All right. How Very far well. is, how far is uh, uh, the drain? Is the town line close? Are you within 500 feet? Yeah, that's what, yeah, right, that's, yeah, that's the part, that's the part that I was looking at in terms of, um, you know, construction, construction traffic using, um, you know, Maloney Road, because it's not the greatest road, and I'm just wondering, would we, uh, when we get to it, would we, we should probably just as a uh, courtesy, even if we're not required to, submit something to them, just in case they had any concern. Not a bad idea. Yeah, we could do that. I mean, that shouldn't be an issue. Yeah, it's temporary. Yeah, it's right. Uh, no, I mean, I understand. Yeah, yeah it's, it's just it's temporary. We just think it's better to than having all that traffic in the front of the building. Oh yeah, hundred yeah. percent. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very all much. All right. Thank you. Last item on the agenda this evening is Mid Hudson Islamic Association Farmers Market.
I think we have some some unanswered questions that I think that need to be um, looked into by our attorney. Um, just to the aspect of what we really need to look at, um, this is probably going to be a very minimal review for our part, um, but we need to check, I guess, a couple of things. So the town has not, to this day, authorized any farmer's market, so you would be the first? So um, we have to figure out what the uh, procedure is for doing that. And also then there's the nuances for you because it's a religious use. So we have to figure out the overlay with that and then bringing in the um, farmers and local. So then we have an ag and markets overlay. So we have to figure out um, the implications of all of that. So I think in talking with the board as a general concept, they didn't have any opposition to the project. There were some concerns that I know the board wanted to talk about in terms of parking perhaps and site management sure. in the event that you were very successful and you had a lot of people coming, how would, for example, traffic be handled, et cetera. So, um, but the legal aspects I will have to look at and then I will get back to you and to the sure, board. Sure, yeah. So we thought through some of the parking, if you want to talk about it now, I don't know. If that's yeah, maybe we could discuss some of the parking. I mean, obviously it looks like you have what proposed 41 spots on the yeah. coming and going over the course of the day. are you proposing for the actual farmer's market? I know it'll so probably vary. The initially, so I mean, we could expand to 15, 20 or more stalls. I think for year one, we were hoping to get 8 to 10 to make it a viable market because according to sort of just some basic research I've done, you need at least 8 to 10 stalls to sort of have enough variety to bring in a crowd. Um, so we're hoping to get at least 8 to 10 year one and then slowly grow. And are you proposing weather related or rain or shine? I think rain or shine for the season. Um, so I talked to some other managers of farmers markets and that's County Millbrook and that sort of stuff and they tend to be rain or shine. Um, vendors can bring their own tents and signage and stuff and so really we're asking the vendor to be prepared for you know whatever happens. If it's extreme weather obviously we wouldn't do it. And I think I read in your papers that the mosque is going to be running it, that the association will be actually running it, so you're not planning to bring in an outside vendor yet, or if you did, it would be under the control of the association? So the way we're set up, the mosque is set up in a way that actually we have overturn of leadership every two years, so I'm the president right now, I have a two-year term, I can run for one more term, but after four years, I'm done, somebody else comes in. And so my proposal initially is the first two to three years, it would be mosque run. I think the best thing to really grow a farmer's market and make it an institution in the town for good would be eventually to expand to like a market steering committee that would have members of the mosque on it, but also members from local businesses, uh, maybe members from local town government, I don't know how that would work, 
grow at some point beyond just the mosque leadership because we have turnover. And so to have sort of continuity year to year, I, my hope is that it's solid enough and grows enough that we can hire a market manager and then have a steering committee that expands beyond just leadership. It could be the business bureau, you know, other members of the community. Okay. All right, so. Um... And have you talked at all to Department of Health or any of those requirements? For... Not yet. Okay. I, was, I kind of didn't even know where to start, and so I started here because I figured you would be able to tell me who to talk to next. Um, so this is a first for us, too. And so, okay. So I'm happy to talk to whoever I need to talk to. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, I guess uh, the board members, you guys have any questions regarding this? I can't really think of anything. I just. I mean, if you're looking rain or shine, I, don't, I think you'd lose yeah. your overflow parking in the rain on that hill. Yeah. But yeah. You ready to get rain? Probably a lot of people too. So. Yeah. 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 It won't get too many. Yeah, I don't think we can. So he's going to want to walk around in the rain. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think right. actually the ball is probably in my court for. I think you need to, to yeah. research out for us at least what actions we do need to take. Right. Um, if any, I, mean, I guess at this point, and how to um, other than maybe piece. just what was submitted, maybe enough for an approval. Um, but I mean, if you could check into that, absolutely, and we'll get get back to the rest of us, um, and then we can move forward from there. But I don't see any, I don't, I don't see any issue with it. I think it's a, um, I think it's a good idea. Um, I, I'm hoping that you guys do very well with it. Yeah. Um, Hopefully we can move this along pretty quick. I hope so, and I know yeah. coronavirus being, you know, yeah. case matters, but if we can all get the permissions and everything in place, then hopefully we can. Yeah. yeah. No, we do need to get beyond that. Lisa, is there any restrictions in what they can sell as far as mercantile or anything like that, if it's associated with? Under the any markets market? law, there's general restrictions, but that's typically when you're in an agricultural zone. Um, but so you could have you know honey and associated soaps if you have that sort of those sort of products. Um, so I imagine that whatever we craft out of this, there would probably be some um, parameters on there to to differentiate it, make sure it's a farmers market and not a bazaar or something a flea market type thing. Mm -hmm. So um, that would be well, one of the things that we would look if at. They were going to make like hemp related fabrics because that's part of the ag thing that they're pushing now. Would that be something they could do there too? Theoretically, if it's um, so if if we found that all of this was authorized under the ag and markets, um, then anything anything that's authorized under ag and markets could be uh, done in the same location. So it would be you know if it comes under the purview of ag and markets, then whatever they allow in their guidance would be what would this board would follow the and the town would follow. Hmm. But we don't want it to turn into like a flea market. Exactly. Well, obviously, a flea market is retail products that are made and not grown. So, you know, there's there are very well, definite requirements in ag and markets about how much produce has to be made, you know, where the goods come from, what sort, how you get your sort materials, etc. So that's definitely covered within ag and markets. Okay. Could uh, all 50 of those spots be utilized considering if this actually goes through? Could, yeah. in conjunction with the, the farmer's market, could it actually be, yeah. or could all the spots be utilized in conjunction with well, the services Well, there's a lot up provided. top for the farmer market stalls, so. so there would be, sorry. Go ahead. There would be a barrier here, so okay. that there's no car to allow us here. Um, so this would be all walking And space. where would the parking be again? The parking would be here. These are, these are parking spots. Um, right now we have two marked handicapped accessible space, uh, okay. spaces.
And there would be no other functions going on at the time that the more farmer's market is no. going on. So whatever the space is there would be dedicated to the farmer's yeah. market. I would like it to be Saturday because of other area markets are on other days. And so Saturday market would be not competing with any other markets, not with the weekend, not with the faster and stuff. Right. You wouldn't be, wouldn't be in competition with anybody else. You yeah. could have. Okay. I mean, I, I said we think we think it's fine. I just we just got to get some guidance from the attorney. Um, once we have the the you know the bugs worked out, exactly which direction we need to go, I think it's probably going to be a pretty quick approval. Yeah. Okay. And please let me know if you have any other questions. I will. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Okay. Thanks. You're welcome. Have a good evening. Okay. Being the last item, do we have any other things that we need to discuss this evening? No? No. Um, I just want to say that on the next agenda, we have an adjourned public hearing. So right now we're not making any moves to cancel, but if we do, what we, if we have to cancel the next meeting since it's an adjourned public hearing, can we do that by a phone vote to? If you have to cancel the public meeting, the meeting would just be canceled. What would happen is if you, the public hearing would then need to be re-noticed for whenever it gets resumed. Okay. We just can't exactly. see 25 people basically, right? Right. Now. right. Yeah. But if we decide to have the meeting and then just postpone the public mm -hmm. hearing to another date, we could do that without any issue? Yes. What, if you were going to do that and you had a quorum physically present in the room, what I would recommend is you just um, open, if anyone is here, let them speak and then adjourn it to the future date. I would recommend that we not close any public hearings unless absolutely necessary while this um, is going on until we have further guidance. But right. there are certain regulations for open meetings law, which hopefully we, if you have a quorum present, you don't have to worry about it. But if we get to the point where we need to have meetings with teleconferences, then other things kick in. But you still can technically hold public meetings at that point and public hearings. Okay. Hopefully we won't need to use that guidance, but oh, we'll see. Yeah. <laughs> what public meeting is this? I'm this sorry? One, this would be for 33 Middle Bush. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right. So I guess we're pretty much... Uh, Do we have the capability of teleconference right over this? I'm sorry? Do we have the ability right now to do a teleconference right over these screens? No. Okay. We're working on it. The catch is if we were to do a teleconference where one or more of the board members were not physically present, you have to uh, allow the public to also use the teleconferencing facilities and you never know how many people. So while we might be able to allow one or two people in the other board members, um, you have to have the ability, if you're doing a teleconference, to have the public also teleconference in. Yeah, that's what I was figuring is more the board yeah. members would be here and people that need to come in front of us could just teleconference in, which would be way easier. And keep the people down in here so our meetings can keep going as normal. We may be able to work something like that out. That's what I mean. Right. We do that at work all the time. Right. And the app, it's only the board members that have to be here in person mm -hmm. before... Um, if they're not here in person, then these special regulations kick in. Yeah. But if we have a quorum here in person, and then we can have applicants Absolutely. or um, other public right. by either yeah. telephone or video conference, yeah. but we'll see. Yeah, usually video conference, because then they can show us plans or whatever they have right in there. Right. Yeah. The problem is our system is a dinosaur. Well, let's fix that. When it comes to the phone, so we're working on that. Business. We have a motion to adjourn. I we'll make that. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. We're adjourned.
Sure.